coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The FAA introduces the first look at proposed UAS regulations. American Red Bull racers are looking good for 2015. And a new Instagram trainer takes flight. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. During a special press briefing held yesterday morning, the FAA announced a proposed framework for new regulations that will address the operation of unmanned aerial systems. This briefing was an overflow of the proposed regulations and did not detail the exact wording that will appear in the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. The details provided under what was called a, quote, flexible framework, seems to include specific rules applying to this type of aerial vehicle, and a mixture of common sense and existing aviation regulations as it relates to the national airspace system. Under the framework discussed, the unmanned aircraft would have a maximum weight of 55 pounds, and it must be registered with the FAA. Areas addressed were operational limitations, operator certification and responsibilities, and aircraft requirements. The issue of what we now refer to as model aircraft was also discussed. While the briefing was only a preliminary look at what the FAA will place into a formal NPRM, it appears at first look that this will be a controversial issue. When the NPRM is released, we expect to see numerous comments. After a 2014 season they'd like to forget, two American pilots, Kirby Chambliss and Michael Gullion, came into the season opener of the Red Bull Air Race World Championship in Abu Dhabi, eager for the winds of change. And in fact, the winds over the Arabian Gulf wreaked havoc with the field in Friday's qualifying, leaving Chambliss with the fourth best time, while Gullion, who's breaking in a brand new race plane, finished a respectable seventh in the elite group of 14 pilots. Mike Marigold, a two-time Red Bull Air Race world champion and now a TV commentator, said that the two Americans should do much better in 2015. Quote, Kirby is flying well and Michael Gullion is doing well here with the bigger wings on his airplane and with his new team. The Americans will definitely have a brighter year, end quote. After the break, Instrum makes the first flight of its new training helicopter. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. AML's patent pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Enstrom Helicopters TH-180 took its first flight earlier this month. In a very brief announcement, the company said the ground and flight test took about an hour and that flight speed and maneuvers were remarkable. Instrum plans to release more details at Heli Expo next month and will have the aircraft on display. When it was introduced at the event in 2014, the company said it was designed with the student in mind. It touted to have a rugged frame with robust energy absorbing landing gear. That's of great value to student training. It also has a high inertia main rotor that provides excellent auto rotation characteristics and coupled with the airframe design, 
contributes to the helicopter stability. It has mechanical controls and the additional safety factor of an unblocked tail rotor. Enstrom says the TH-180 will be an economical addition to the training fleet. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off and Sometimes a simple handshake just isn't good enough. What they want, what they need, is a big ass hug. Submit your best photos on Guidance Aviation's Facebook page. Hashtag hug a pilot. Don't be shy. In this video, produced by Guidance Aviation, they celebrated Valentine's Day by admonishing everyone to hug a pilot. We applaud them for addressing this important issue. Search Hug a Pilot on YouTube. After these messages, the UAE issues a $1 million prize for a good UAV. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The United Arab Emirates has awarded a $1 million prize to a Swiss company in its UAE Drones for Good award. Apparently, this is a kind of X prize for the development of drones designed, quote, for the good of the people, end quote. An iPad with a navigation app proved its value when a Piper Comanche lost its electrical system at night and the pilot used an iPad to navigate to an alternate airport. No injuries occurred during the subsequent gear-up landing. Following the crash of the TransAsia ATR-72 earlier this month, the airline initiated a pilot testing program. It's reported that 10 pilots failed the initial oral exam and will be given remedial training. A FedEx airplane landing at Albuquerque last week was targeted with a green laser. The aircraft landed safely, but the pilots were taken to a hospital to check for possible eye damage. More than 4,000 such incidents were reported last year. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. The Virginia Regional Festival of Flight, an annual fly-in held at Sioux Folk Executive Airport each spring, will not be held this year so that a reorganizational plan can be initiated. After 17 years of successfully sponsoring the Virginia Regional Festival of Flight, the Virginia Aviation Council has decided to forego holding the 2015 event so that it can be refocused to encourage additional participation and new activities for 2016. Efforts will be made to enhance the program for the statewide fly-in, including offering more opportunities to attract youth to flying and to inform them about aviation careers available to them. The Virginia Department of Aviation and the Virginia Aviation Council plan to invite additional Virginia aviation-oriented organizations to participate in the planning process to grow and rebrand the 2016 festival as a leading venue in the aviation community across the entire state. Well, that's our program for Monday, February 16th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please join us every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.